Okay, good morning. Um, it's been about a year since I did the last um, video tutorial on layering, doing multicolor design with the Silhouette Studio, um, and I, life just got away from me, so I haven't done any follow-up videos, but several of you asked um, for direction on following through with the entire design all the way through construction um, and application. So I thought I'd do a little video um, on that included that as well. So I'm going to show you the design process. This one is going to be slightly different than the last one. The last one um, I went through and created all the colored elements and then we did a black outline and the black outline sat on top of it um, to pull the whole design together. This one is going to be kind of the reverse because some of the details on this image are a little bit finer and trying to um, trace a, a single black outline to fit around the fine details can kind of cover up the detail. And so in this case, the black is actually gonna be the background and the color elements are gonna sit on top of it. So you can learn both ways. And this one I'm gonna walk through all the way um, to cutting vinyl um, and then layering and building up the image. So um, I have a little friend who has requested a, a picture of, of the um, Mushu dragon for Mulan. And so um, I started just like I did last time with a color book image, cause they're the easiest ones to trace. And then we'll build um, the color picture from it. In fact, I'll try to, I've created one already, so I'll t try to slip in here a picture of what the final image is going to look like. So first step that we have right here, just like we did last time, is we're going to trace the image. So we're going to go over here and click Select Trace Area. I've already put in my little picture onto my mat, so I'm going to highlight the area I want to trace and um, it looks for the black, it actually looks for contrast areas, so it's going to highlight with yellow the um, black lines. Um, it's kind of weak, the lines are, so I want to give them a little bit more weight, so I'm going to go over here to threshold, and I'm going to amp it up a little bit, and as you amp that up, you can see the lines getting a little fatter and healthier. That's what I'm looking for before I trace it, so that looks pretty good to me. Um, the thin lines have some weight to them. I want to make sure that there's no gaps along the lines. Um, so I think that's where I'd like to have it. Then I'm just going to hit the trace button and it traces those black. Now a reminder from last tutorial, it traces both the inside and the outside of the line. And so that frustrates a lot of people, but it actually is what we're looking for, especially when we go to cut out something and we want to create that black background or black outline to help define the area better. I scoot the original image off to the side and then I'm going to work with my outline just so that you can see that it worked. If you select the image, you go over to fill and you hit black, it's going to fill in the lines and there, there's my image. You could go ahead and cut this, but remember it's going to cut the inside of the line and the outside of the line and so you're just going to get an outline cut from black vinyl or HTV or whatever you choose to cut. So there's no, at this point there's no just cutting the outside edge. You could as a send one of your cut features just cut outline but you have to work with that. So anyways, my ultimate goal is to create a colored image of this character. Um, so we've got it filled right now. What I'm gonna do is actually leave it filled because it helps us to see details. Okay, so um, right now you can kind of see what I wanna do first is clean up the image a little bit and then I'm gonna break it down into its elements just like I did the last video and color the individual elements. Okay, there are some floaters around the outside of this that I wanna get rid of um, and that falls in line with the first step that we do. The first step we do after we've traced it is we go up and release compound. And I think I talked about it last time, compound essentially tells the software that you want all of these lines to be merged together to act like one single image. Um, when you release it, it says, make sure that they're all broken up and they're not the same image so that I can manipulate individual pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm going to tell it to release compound, and as soon as I do, it says, okay, they're individual images. You can see all these little bounding boxes here. Those are highlighting every single little image line or group of lines. So now, these little floaters over here that I don't like, I can get rid of because they're not attached to the whole image. So first I'm going to click out here to deselect it, then I can highlight those little pieces that I don't want and delete them. So I can kind of clean up the area. I'm looking around for any other floaters that might have jumped ship and, and I don't see any. So right now it's broken up into individual pieces. So if I went over here, in fact maybe we should take the fill off so you can see the lines better. 
we're going to take the fill out. So each one of these is individual lines. So if I wanted to, I could go over here and take the inside of his tail and drag it out. But I don't want to, so I'm going to hit Control Z, which is my keyboard shortcut to return that. So now they're individual pieces. What I'm going to do is color the individual pieces, each one of these little things, and then I'm going to color one big background, and then we'll lay the pieces onto the black background to assemble them. So just like I did on the last one, you always copy and give your save file the the oh no I screwed up file on the side. So I'm going to hit command C on the Mac which is copy and I'm going to scoot over and hit command V which is paste and I'm going to leave it over there. This is my oh no I screwed up but that's okay because I have an extra file. So now I'm going to go back here and what we're going to do is we're going to start to group together um, features that are of like color and I can fill them in to know what I'm going to cut vinyl for. For example, I highlighted this line which apparently is all of his body and in the um, colored op or the colored character, in fact let me just pull in the color character so you can see. I have a copy of him over here. This is my final product. But this is the colored picture I have of him. We'll scoot the black and white over. You can see what colors he's supposed to have. So that will help me color my little guy. So what I'm looking at is his main body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into my, my outline here, find all of his main body parts, highlight them, and color them the color they're supposed to. And how that plays out is at the end, I'm going to group all of those same color elements together. I'll put a group around them. I'll tie them together. And then when I put my piece of vinyl down that's that color, um, I'll use the advanced cutting features and tell it only to cut those body parts or those pieces of the puzzle that are that color. So it, at the advanced level, it cuts by color. And that's what I'm looking to do when I go to put this whole thing together. So this little guy, those body parts are red. Um, if you'll see around his mouth and all those things. Um, if you're wondering, when I push spacebar, it turns your cursor into a hand, which then when you click allows you to drag. So that's how I move back and forth on the screen. So I'm going to click and color in a lot of these places. In fact, as I'm doing that, I may just jump ahead to fast forward, but let's see. We're going to color in these body parts. So just to make sure you see what I'm doing, I'm clicking on the body part. See here's the body part line, this internal line that I want, and I click the fill color. All right. So we move down here, we click on this internal body part I want to color, and we fill it in. And down okay, here, so right here right. I'm going to fast forward for sake of time. Here's colored in. Okay, so what about the other colors? Um, just so you can see, and I'll start here and then we'll skip ahead to it being done. His crest on his back is actually a darker, like a maroon. So I'm going to go over here using my advanced color options and we're going to find a, there we go, a nice maroon color. So now when I want to fill in the other features that are maroon, like this little nail here, I can just go pick up my eyedropper, select the maroon, and now it's changed that to a maroon color in my color options. So when I select the other features that I want maroon, I can just go back. Oops, that selected more than his fingernail. I can go back and click there. Um, I forgot a portion of his finger. That needs to be this color. Okay. He has a little wedge of a nail here. That's maroon. Okay, so I'm going to go and do that for the whole entire thing. Same thing um, for like his chest scales, they're yellow. So I'm going to go back through and I'm going to click on that chest scale and I'm going to turn it yellow. Okay, so eventually you're going to color everything. Up here, I think his whisker is yellow, his teeth are white, um, white. His eyeballs are white, this one's white, I think that little spot in his eye, 
Oh, that, we'll go back and we'll teach you about that one. Um, his nose, I think, is that dark burgundy color. Okay, and like his ear is like this light, happy, peachy pink. Um, there we go. And his tongue is the same color. So we'll do the same thing we did before. I'll go over and click the eyedrop, select it, and now it changes that option button. I think that spot right there. So that's the part of his tongue. And if I remember correctly, the bottom part of his foot's th that same color. So go through here. Okay, so you go through and you click and change them all. Then at the very end, we're gonna go in and fill in that black layer to give it the form and the outline. So I'm gonna click on this black outline, and when you go to fill that one in, you can see it fills around the character. So I haven't finished filling in the rest of the character. Um, so once you go in and fill in the rest of the character, they, so you can even do it now, but I have to click outside and re-click like, no. It's not letting me, okay. There we go. It wasn't letting me select the internal part, but I kind of forced the issue. There we go. Okay. So we can spend, spend the next little while doing that. All right, so then let me show you. That's how we color him in. Okay, so let me show you this is, switch over here to this side to the fully colored in Mushu. Okay, and scoot our color book friend over there. So this is the Mushu all fully colored in. Okay, 